Hey, how's it going, everyone? My name is Derek Afasi. I'm the owner of Afasi Financial Group and RetireSharp.com. Today's topic, I want to discuss in depth annuity fees and go over some of the correct um, things regarding annuity fees out there and then also some of the misconceptions about annuity free fees depending upon which annuity product that you're looking to place your dollars into. You know, does that result in something that the carrier could charge an additional fee, how to expose hidden fees, and just go through a whole plethora of options uh, really exposing the the uh, the cons regarding annuity fees, how that could uh, really negate any sort of gains that you have throughout your account, throughout your growth process, and ultimately, what does that mean on a retirement income side as well? So, to get started, you know what are annuity fees? And you know, simply put, fees it's it's basically fees within an annuity contract. So you have annuities, you have a single premium immediate annuity. You have fixed annuities, you have fixed indexed annuities, you have deferred income annuities, you have hybrid annuities, which are a fixed index annuity with income rider, you have variable annuities. Um, there's a whole slew of different types of annuity contracts. And then on top of it, you have multiple carriers that offer multiple contracts per you know, individual annuity situation. So what you're probably thinking of is what the heck, how am I supposed to you know, figure this out? How do I know whether something has a fee or not? You know, what exactly is there a way that I could know if I'm and, and uh, have confidence if I'm placing my dollars into something that I'm not getting beat to hell in fees, you know, on the back end that I just was not aware of when I signed that application. And to take a step back, two of the main reasons why someone should ever use an annuity contract or leverage annuity contracts are for safe, consistent growth and then lifetime income. So if someone's not trying to leverage an annuity for lifetime income, there's a way on how they can use their retirement dollars, whether that's an IRA monies, put that into an IRA annuity and have safe, consistent growth onto that. Um, eliminate fees that they're used to regarding 401k accounts or IRA accounts that are managed through financial advisors, different things that could allow somebody to have more of that, you know, systematic growth that, uh, you know, if the market goes down, not have that worry if the, that their account's going to also be susceptible with it and getting hit with fees. Um, or you could utilize annuities specifically for their lifetime income. And that was the main purpose of annuity contracts was an annuity was supposed to be the opposite of life insurance. So you have life insurance that protects an individual from dying too soon. If let's say you have a breadwinner of a family and you know they're going to work each and every day and they have expenses to pay the mortgage expenses for their children, all those different things. And let's say you say you have a stay at home parent or a parent that doesn't make as much money. Um, you know, you want to essentially make sure that that breadwinner is covered or both parents are covered with life insurance to say, God forbid, one was to pass away uh, before the kids are out of the house, before retirement age, before these expenses are paid off, that the insurance company would pay a lump sum, a tax free lump sum death benefit to those loved ones. So it's that pure protection that the individual is paying a set monthly premium amount or annual premium amount to an insurance company and the insurance company is creating a death benefit for them on the back end to therefore pay out to their beneficiaries an annuity is the complete opposite of that an annuity or the first the first uh, slew of annuities that occurred was for these insurance companies to try to leverage their actuarial data use the statistics that make them profitable on a life insurance standpoint and run those numbers in the opposite direction to say, if somebody has a lump sum dollar amount, let's say that they received an inheritance from a life insurance and they have this lump sum dollar amount, rather than go and, you know, invest those dollars and invest it into, you know, different brokerage accounts and, or, you know, just leave it in the cash and just slowly dwindle away that bucket they run that risk of outliving those retirement dollars, outliving those retirement, you know, that, that, that retirement income or whatever that income is meant for that specific goal. So what an insurance company is, they're the only ones that could offer annuity contracts, just like banks are the only ones that could offer bank related products, bank CDs. Basically each one has to, each entity has to stick to their own lane. What it said was an individual that maybe wants to trigger income, they take this lump sum that they received they purchase uh, an annuity through an insurance company. And then that insurance company is saying, okay, based upon your sex, based upon your age, 
we could provide you X amount of thousands of dollars of income every month or every year to the day that you pass away. So if you have an individual that is 60 years old and they say that I have $100,000 and I want to trigger income immediately, well, the insurance company does a calculation based upon their actuarial data and they say, okay, this person could receive $5,000 every year to the day that they pass away. So the good thing is if this person outlives that 20 year mark, because 5,000 times 20 years equals $100,000, every year that they live past age 80, they're in the green. They're basically now sticking it to the insurance company of saying, thank you very much. You know, I'm getting 5,000. The next year they're getting 5,000. Next year they're getting 5,000. So that's when it's a win for the, the annuitant, for the individual that's purchasing that contract. Where it's a negative is when that insurance company Let's say that this individual only pa uh, basically only lives for a couple of years, and then they pass away. So let's say if they've only gotten paid out, you know, two two payments of five thousand dollars. Well, now you have ninety thousand dollars that got left back over, and the insurance company gets to keep that money. So they were able to invest this full lump sum, utilize their actuarial data, and then control how much income is getting paid out. With that type of annuity, what I just explained is the old traditional type of annuity, and that's known as a single premium immediate annuity. Those types of contracts do not have fees associated with them. Reason being is because that individual is giving up control of their monies to therefore receive a set income stream. It's not like they have a hidden fee in the contract that, you know, all of a sudden because all these other financial advisors are trying to say, oh, all annuities have these hidden fees. A single premium immediate annuity does not have those specific fees associated with it. The next in line that's very similar to a single premium immediate annuity would be a deferred income annuity, a DIA. What that says is, let's say that you have that same individual age 60, but now they want to wait, they have $100,000, and now they want to wait till age 65 to trigger that income. Well, because they now left that money with the insurance company longer, and they're not going to trigger their single life payout until age 65, instead of $5,000 with the SPIA, Maybe this person's going to be offered, you know, $8,000 with the DIA, with the deferred income annuity. So once again, right, when they hit in between that 15 to 20 year mark, if that individual triggers it at age 65 and they're receiving $8,000 of income every single year, um, if they passed away in a couple of years and they took the single life only option, once again, the insurance company is winning out on the deal. They're the ones who they, they're able to receive all those profits. So let's say this person triggered income at 65, took it for two years, $16,000 got paid out. All of a sudden that individual unfortunately passes away. So now you have $84,000 that goes back to the insurance company and the insurance company was able to leverage that $100,000, invest that money in the back end, utilize their actuarial data to therefore mathematically decide what that offer was going to be you know, in that in that future year. So when somebody's getting set up in an annuity contract, it all depends upon the day that they're setting that up. So like a single premium immediate annuity today could be completely different from three months from today because it's a combination of actuarial data and then interest rates. Those are what, and, you know, and basically the longevity that the risk that the insurance company wants to take on. So that's why you might see company A offer a single premium immediate annuity of 5,000, but company B might offer a single premium immediate annuity of 8,000, uh, sorry, of 6,000, and company B might be a better route. Or if on the DIA, you might be having company A offering 8,000, but company B offers 10,000, well then company B is gonna be better on the DIA. But just like how the single premium median annuity works, you're not paying a fee, but it doesn't make it a good product also. Like I don't like SPIAs. I don't like single premium median annuities until unless they're completely necessary. And I really hate deferred income annuities, DIAs, because I think that you're, you're losing too much control. The insurance company knows exactly what they're doing. That's why they're giving you that offer. And they're gonna basically be able to leverage your dollars, still pay out, but if they're doing that with millions of individuals, they're able to always churn that profit and the individual is, majority of the individuals are going to fall victim to those numbers and to the, the profits of the insurance company. So that's why I don't like those. But once again, when we're talking about annuity fees, those two contracts do not have annuity fees. The next type of annuity is a fixed annuity. And I always discuss that type of product is known as a MIGA, multi-year guaranteed annuity. And these were 
originally created because you had a lot of banks were taking over the retirement income market space. So you had an, you had, when you had double digit figures, double digit interest rates, an individual was able to say, okay, I have 10, I have a hundred thousand dollars. Let me throw my money into a bank CD, a five year bank CD that's paying 8%. And this will allow me to just live off the interest each and every year after those five years are done then I could take my principal of $100,000. I would have been receiving $8,000 the first year, $8,000 the second year for those five years. So they would have been received $40,000 of income total and still be able to walk away with their, their principal at the end of the year. So then you had insurance companies that said, we think that we could do a really good product as well, similar to this bank CD concept. So that's when they came out with the multi-year guaranteed annuity. And instead of paying, because they have different reserve ratios, instead of a $1,000, $100,000 five-year contract with the bank city paying 8%, maybe a fixed annuity for five years would be able to pay 10%. So it's a better incentive to go with that MIGA, that fixed index annuity, sorry, that fixed annuity to therefore, after five years, they would have total income of hundred grand and still have their $100,000 principal. Well, since that point in time, obviously, interest rates have hit all-time lows. You can't leverage those types of fixed interest rates because the interest rates are so low as a, as a retirement income supplement. But when it comes to fixed annuities, some MIGAs and the ones that I like to offer are they do not have any fees associated with them, meaning that they're going to be giving that pure you know, 10% as this example. Well, right now, like a five-year uh, MIGA is paying a little over 3%. So what that says is you'd get 3%, 3%, 3%, you know, for X amount of years that you had set up in that contract, you don't have any fees associated there. But there are MIGA products that have fees associated with it. And that's where you have to look a little bit, that's where you have to look very closely to say, what's the smoke and mirrors? What's the catch? Is there a hidden fee associated with this type of contract? So you have some carriers that want to mask their product to basically do the ultimate bait and switch, that you might have company A that is providing a true 3% guarantee. And let's say a $100,000, you know, 60 year old puts in $100,000 for a five year, 3% paying MIGA with company A. Well, we understand the first year they could take out $3,000, second year they could take out $3,000. If they want to leave it, they could allow it to compound interest in there. At the end of all five years, they'll have that $100,000 remaining. There wasn't any cost to receive that interest that they gain. That's part of those policies is there's no additional fee. We have other carriers that might say, oh, we'll pay a 3.10% gain into your account each year on a MIGA. But the hidden math is if you want to have access to whatever this gain is, it's going to cost you 30 basis points. 0.30% to have access and to actually pull monies from that from that cash value. So the main reason if someone's trying to leverage this type of contract and let's say their their main goal was to use that 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 sort of income supplement, well what they're doing is they're shooting themselves in the foot because if they're getting a gain of 3.10% but it's costing them 0.30%, they're truly only getting a gain of 2.80%. So that's the smoke and mirrors that you want to avoid if you're looking towards fixed annuities, in particular with the MIGA, and that is when fees can get exposed and fees could be hidden. So if you're, you're interested in that type of product, just make sure that you're aware that you know, you're, you're seeing clear as day in the statement of understanding with these contracts when you, before you sign it, that it does not show any hidden fees, it doesn't say any rider costs, anything like that. And that's usually where the annuity fees come about is because of that rider cost that's associated you know, if you're going to add an additional benefit. They were, yes, they're paying, these types of contracts could be paying 3.10%, but you might be handcuffed into the terms of the contract to say it's not that flexible as opposed to company A that's giving you 3% with more, much more flexibility, and it makes a lot more sense to do so. The other type of product, and, you know, what I mentioned before was that interest rates have hit all-time lows. So now you have the top five-year products. What you, used to, what you used to be able to do is leverage a MIGA, leverage a bank CD, use you know, 8, 10, 12% rates of return, put your dollars in there, and then just live off the interest each and every year until that 
that term has expired and then they just repurchase a new five-year product or a new eight-year product or whatever that is. So it was known as a laddering strategy. They just constantly keep re-rolling the CD. So that's why you had bankers were acted like, you know, retirement income specialists, even though all we were doing was just putting into a product that was just a very high rate of return because interest rates were very high at that point in time. Same thing with annuity, um, with annuity agents. They would just go put the person in a MIGA and, you know, it was a really simple way to just set up a laddering strategy with those types of contracts. So when interest rates were hitting long all-time lows, individuals said, well, 3% isn't going to cut it. You know, if I have a million dollars and I need to live off of, you know, $50,000 a year of income, and that's what I want to use as a fixed income, if I'm getting 3%, that's only 30 grand. You know, I, I'm in the whole $20,000. What exactly is there a better alternative? And that's where the FIAs might be a, a good situation. Majority of fixed index annuities do not have any fees whatsoever. If you are not adding an income rider or a death benefit rider or some other crazy rider onto that type of contract, just a pure fixed index annuity works very similar to a, a pure MIGA with no fees associated with it. And the benefits of a FIA it gives you upward market growth, no downward market losses. Some have little fees. The ones that I like to offer have no fees. And the time horizon that individuals typically leverage for these types of contracts is anywhere in the low end of six years and on the high end about 10 years. And what you're trying to get with these types of contracts is growth with safety. So just like that same concept of a MIGA where you'd get paid that 3% each and every year, and you could either you take this money, take that 3% out of income, or you could allow that 3% to keep rolling up into the account. That's the same sort of concept with the FIA. Um, what they're doing, what the insurance company allows is rather than pay like that fixed percentage rate, they leverage that and they invest that into the market to say that if the market comes back favorable, if you have a fixed index annuity with, let's say it's tied to an S&P 500 and that comes back with, and you have a 10% cap as an example, and the market gains 20% that first year, you're going to have a plus 10% gain into your account. You could use that gain and use it as income, or you could allow it to roll back into the contract. The next year, let's say the market loses 20%, well, you have a floor of 0%. Remember, it's going to gain when upward market growth, no downward market losses. So it allows you to consistently, if you need to, like in this example, where the person has a million dollars and they want to pull out 50000 well, the first year, they could take out their $50,000. The next year, even though they gain 0%, well, they still had a plus $100,000 gain from the first year, so then they could take out another $50,000. So you could take it out more systematic. You have more flexibility with how you're pulling out those monies, but it's just like a bucket with a lid over it. Rather than throwing your dollars into you know, brokerage accounts or IRA that, that's, that's monitored through, through an advisor and tied to stocks, bonds, mutual funds, these ETFs, individuals gravitate towards that FIA-type concept to give them that peace of mind to try to beat out the pace of inflation, beat out those low interest rate environment, and still try to get some upward market growth potential with no downward market losses. In particular, I like to see the ones with no fees. So you don't have an advisor fee that's lingering on. You don't have any sort of rider fees that are lingering on. It's just a very safe, consistent growth strategy um, with leveraging the FIA. And once again, when we're having this conversation with fees, it's not going to have any fees when set up properly. Now, the next type of contract, which is deemed the high marketing name is a hybrid annuity. It is a fixed indexed annuity with an income rider. Once again, for that individual that's trying to leverage lifetime income, the bad thing about the SPIAs and the DIAs is that that individual is surrendering all control of their monies. So you have to, you know, if you're going to go this route, you really have to be committed with it and understand that you can't access your money again if you choose that single life only income option on a SPIA or a DIA. These FIAs with income riders, what they do, what it says is it's going to act like an FIA, like a fixed index annuity. So it's going to gain when the market goes up, not lose when the market goes down. But the main purpose is for this income rider because you're going to try to leverage lifetime income at that later date. So like, let's say if you're the individual's age 60 and they want to retire at age 65, like the DIA, that contract was going to pay $8,000 
every year to the day that person passed away. With the FIA with income rise, these hybrid annuities, they're typically paying a little bit higher rates of return. And you could get a five-year deferral. Let's say this person puts in 100000 At age 65, they could receive $10,000 of lifetime income. The major difference between this one and the DIA is let's say if they take out 10000 the person takes out 10000 God forbid, passes away. Whatever's remaining in that account value that's still gaining when the market goes up, flatlining when the market goes down, that account value is going to get left to the beneficiaries. So once again, I said that there, when you have a rider, there can be a fee associated with it. Some hybrid annuities do not have any fees. Majority of them do have fees. And that fee is usually right around 1% or less. Those are the ones that I like to see. And understand that that fee has to be justified. There's not a hidden fee like variable annuities. The fixed index annuities with income rider, you're basically leveraging it specifically for that lifetime income stream. If you do not need lifetime income, just get set up and you like that concept of a fixed index annuity, get set up with an FIA, give you that safety, that consistency, don't add a rider. Don't listen to the advisor when they're telling you, oh, no, well, you know, you have this 7% this, this guarantee. That's all fictitious numbers. Those are where you have individuals that get pissed off when they get set up into those hybrid annuity contracts because they were not aware that there was a fee associated with a benefit that they did not want to begin with. So once again, like if you're in a contract and let's say there's a 1% fee, well, that fee is going to justify it. And I think all day long, it's necessary to pay that fee because it's doing exactly what you wanted this contract to do. Give you safety and uh, consistent growth on one side on your physical money and then allow you to keep and remain control of lifetime income on the other side. So like in this example, let's say if there was no market gains and let's say that, the, that your account value after 10 years hit $0, the whole purpose of you purchasing that rider was the insurance company still on the hook now to pay you $10,000 every single year to the day you pass away. So let's say if this person, you know, outlives at age 75, well, now the insurance company is saying, holy crap, I want this person to die because we keep shelling out more and more dollars out of our books to pay for this individual that keeps living longer. This person could live to his hundreds, his or her hundreds, and that $10,000 would still remain. So that's the benefit when you're leveraging these hybrid type contracts. And yes, majority of them have a fee, but that fee is necessary. And you want to really make sure that you know exactly what that fee is if you're going this hybrid annuity route. And the very last type of annuity, and this is where a lot of people get confused, and they think that with these hidden fees, when you have these advisors that expose these hidden fees, what they're usually mentioning, and even the financial experts that you see on television, what they're usually mentioning is the variable annuities. So what a variable annuity does kind of acts like the FIA, the fixed index annuity. It's like a bucket. But it's more along the lines of how a regular brokerage account works. So this is just, it's offered by an insurance company. That's why it's called an annuity. But what happens is this individual is now tying their money typically to mutual funds and different funding options. So with variable annuities, you have to pay for insurance-related expenses, such as mortality and expense fees, administration fees, um, mutual fund-related fees. There's a, uh, you could have advisor fees could tack on to these types of accounts. That's just with the plain vanilla variable annuity. And there is anywhere from 10 to 59 different types of fees that could be exposed within a variable annuity. A lot of reason why people don't understand what those fees are is because the agent, the advisor, usually hands you a 300, 400 page prospectus. But understand that in that prospectus, it does outline all these hidden fees in there. It's just, it's better to watch, you know, it's more exciting to watch paint dry on a wall than to read a prospectus in some clients' minds. So that's why they usually get, you know, duped into those variable annuity contracts. Just like the FIA, where you could attach an income rider, this is the worst thing that, you know, I, I completely bash variable annuities. I don't like variable annuities. Um, I've rarely ever found situations where variable annuities are, are actually good for a client situation that a, that a hybrid annuity cannot beat out. But understand if you also attach income riders to that, you're going to add an income rider fee. There might be a death benefit fee. If you're adding a death benefit rider, there's going to be an additional death benefit rider fee. So what happens is you're going to be anywhere between three, and I've seen as high as 8% in annual fees before your account does anything with those mutual funds or those funding options. So let's say if you're paying those fees each and every year and you have a downward market loss 
based upon these accounts. Let's say the market goes down 10% and you're paying 5% in fees, the market goes down 10% and you decide to take out 5% that year. If you had a million dollar bucket, you would have taken out 50,000. You would have ended up losing $200,000 of value that one year. The next year you have 800,000. You're still trying to pull out $50,000 from that account, which is now a larger percentage and you're still paying for those, you know, upwards of 5%, 8% worth of fees in that variable annuity. So this is where the, the last thing I wanted to mention was, you know, the annuity fees. This is where you'd usually hear the, the retirement disasters, the, the, the horrible, holy crap moments is when individuals get duped into a variable annuity. They didn't really understand how that income rider worked, how the fees worked, how their account value is now at zero dollars only after a couple of years when they thought that they were going to have this great, you know, growth potential with guaranteed income potential. And it was just a whole, you know, excuse my language, clusterfuck off of getting set up with that type of plan. So in closing, if you found value in this video and you would want us to run a free annuity stress test off of the plans that you're looking about getting set up in or have questions on, simply call our 1-800 number. It's 1-800-566-1002. We offer 24-7 customer service. You give us call, a call mornings, nights, weekends, holidays, whatever the case may be, and someone will be there to take your phone call. Um, when calling over, what you could assume is you're going to talk to an assistant. The assistant's going to ask you some questions and, you know, what, are, what in particular, you know, just let them know that you saw a video online. And then they're going to patch you over to a specialist. And then that specialist is going to try to, you know, see what your situation is, kind of what you were um, uh, pitched or, you know, kind of what was your annuity goals, whatever that, that case may be. And we could either run off of your current annuity contracts or if you're interested in annuity, we could also set you up and show you systematically when an annuity makes sense. And most importantly, when an annuity really doesn't make sense at all. And you might be better off of just, you know, staying put and definitely not going that annuity route. So, um, you know, we try to be as uh, methodical with our process and we try to put education first. Uh, that's why I believe we're A-plus rate on the Better Business Bureau. We've always had very good reviews. We've never, had, we've never had any complaints. It's because of this methodical process. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Retire Sharp, so you can have access to the most updated videos. Thanks so much, guys.